Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next session on quantitative aspects of chemical change. In this lesson, we're going to carry on going through some exam paper questions on quantitative aspects of chemical change. The reason I'm going through this is because it's actually a huge section and it's very, very important. Um, I was just going through with my matrix, funny enough, I was just going through the um, grade 12 prelim paper for the Western Cape um, education department and I was shocked at how much um, stoichiometry and quantitative assessment they actually had in their um, in the fan in the prelim paper which this was said by the government and it gives me a strong indication of what they are planning to do which is include a lot of it in the finals um and if that's the trend it means that your guys for next year are also going to be getting it in the finals as well so we need to be aware of it we need to make sure that we can do all these types of questions so so let's get started. It says you're given the equation to sodium hydroxide, which is aqueous, water, a sulfuric acid, which is aqueous, sulf, sodium sulfate, aqueous, and water, which is liquid. And it says 25 cubic centimeters of 0.7 moles per decimeter cubed of sulfuric acid. Solution was pipetted into conical flask and titrated with sodium hydroxide. It was found that 23 cubic centimeters of the sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize the acid. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that is actually a pretty easy question for the simple reason that we can just use our formula that we've been given. But the first thing we need to do is write this out so that we can fill in all the information. Okay, so we've got 2 NaOH plus H2SO4 goes to Na2SO4 plus 2H2O. Now the very first thing that I would do always is that I would make sure this is balanced for the simple reason that they haven't told us that it's a balanced equation. So I would always, always, always just check it. So that means that two sodiums here and then two sodiums here. There are one sulfur there and one sulfur there. There is two oxygens plus four is six and that's four plus two is six. And that's two and two is four and that's four. So yes, it is balanced. Now let's write out the information they gave us. They gave us 25 cubic centimeters of a concentration of 0,1, sorry, 0,7. Let me fix that. That is 0,7 moles per decimeter cubed of the sulfuric acid solution was pipetted into conical flask and titrated. It was found that you needed 23 cubic centimeters and they want to know what is the concentration of this. Okay, so the formula that you get given on the formula sheet says CA VA over CB VB is equal to NA over NB, okay? Where N is the number of moles that are theoretically um, in front of this equation. And C, A, and C, B are the concentrations of the acids and the bases. And V, A, and V, B are the volumes. And the nice thing about this is because it is um, a ratio, you don't have to convert these centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed. You don't need to do that at all. Okay, right, so what we're going to do is fill this in into that formula and we're going to solve. That's how easy this is. So we've got the concentration of the acid is 0,7 multiplied by the volume of the acid, which is 25, over the concentration of the base, which is what we are working out, multiplied by the volume that we used, which was 23, is equal to the number of moles of acids, and you can see there's an implied one year, over two. Okay, now do you agree we can just cross multiply? So I'm writing it over here. We've got 0, 0,7 
times by 25 times by 2, I'm taking that 2 across, is equal to, uh, sorry, over 23 is equal to the concentration of the base. I'm just taking that across over there. And now we need our calculator. So let's go hunt our calculator down. Okay, so our calculator says 0 0.7 multiplied by 25 multiplied by 2 equals divided by 23 equals that doesn't help at all 1.52 so the concentration of the base is 1,52 moles per decimeter cubed okay not too difficult, eh? Hey? Right, let's try a slightly more in interesting reaction. Ozone reacts with nitrogen monoxide to produce nitrogen dioxide gas, and you'll see it also gives of oxygen. The nitrogen monoxide gas forms largely as a result of emissions from the exhausts of the motor vehicles and from certain jet planes. So we don't like this happening because when this happens, it means that the ozone is being depleted. Okay, so nitrogen monoxide is given off by um, the exhaust of motor vehicles, jet planes and everything. It reacts with the ozone, gives off oxygen, which is great, but not fantastic because the ozone is what protects us from the UV rays. Okay, and then it gives off nitrogen dioxide. The nitrogen dioxide gas also contributes to the brown smoke and the fog called smog smog which is seen over most urban areas if you've ever flown into Joburg you will notice that there is this horrible smog okay hanging over the especially if it hasn't rained for a while okay and that causes breathing problems the following equation indicates the reaction between ozone and nitrogen monoxide. So you get ozone plus NO gives you O2 plus NO2. And again, let's just check that it's balanced. We've got three oxygens and one makes four oxygens, and that two is four oxygens, one nitrogen and one nitrogen. It says in this reaction, 0.74 grams of ozone, 0.74 grams of ozone reacts with 0.67 grams of nitrogen monoxide. First question it says calculate the number of moles of ozone and the number of moles of NO present in the reaction. That's quite nice and easy for us. The number of moles is mass over molar mass. Okay, so we need to obviously work out our number of moles. This formula is on your formula sheet. Okay, so let us think about how we can solve this. First of all, we need to do the number of moles of ozone. So let's do that. That is 3 times 16. That's the mass. Um, no, sorry, my bad. That's the molar mass. The mass is the mass that was given to us, which was 0 0.74. So that's 0 0.74 is the mode divided by the molar mass, which is 3 times 16. So let's get our calculator and we've got 0 0.74 divided by bracket 3 times 16 bracket equals that doesn't help 0, 0, 0.15 moles so that is 0, 0, 0.15 moles of O3 okay now let's work out the number of moles of NO so number of moles of NO is again the mass of the molar mass. Nitrogen's molar mass is 14 and oxygen is 16. The mass we were given is 0, 0,67. So we've got 0, 0,67 divided by the molar mass of 14 plus 16, which is 0, 0,67 divided by 30. So let's pop that in our calculator. Um, so it's 0, 0.6. 
seven divided by 30 equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 moles of NO. Okay, so we've done that. Now it says identify the limiting reagent in the reaction and justify your answer. Now what you need to remember is that the limiting reagent is the one that is used up first. One used up first. Okay, so let's look at this. We've got O3 plus NO. So do you agree it's a mole ratio of one to one? We've only been given 0, 0, 0.015 moles of O3, whereas, so that would require 0, 0, 0.015 moles of NO. But do you see that we've got more than that? We've got 0, 0.02 moles of NO. So therefore, the limiting reagent is going to be our O3 because it is a smaller mole. We've been given smaller amounts of moles than that of NO. Okay. Now it says calculate the mass of NO2 produced in this reaction. Okay, so now the reason you want the limiting reagent is because that helps us work out how much product we get. Because you are now going to look at the ozone, which is your O3, and you're going to go, okay, fine, we need to look at the number of moles, and we need to look at the mole ratio from O3 to NO2. So luckily, the ratio again from O3 to NO2 is a ratio of 1 to 1. Therefore, since we're using up all the moles, 0, 0, 0.015 moles of the ox O3, the ozone, we're going to make 0, 0, 0.015 moles of NO2. So now we want the mass again. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. Okay, we've got the number of moles. We can work out the molar mass so we can find the mass. And that's what they asked us for, the most is for the mass. So mass is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0.015 multiplied by the molar mass of NO2, which is 14 plus 32. Why 32? Because 2 times 16 is 32. Which equals what? Well, it's 0, 0, 0.015 five multiplied by 14 14 plus 32 close bracket equals and that's 0, 0,69 grams 0, 0,69 grams grams so we'll be making 0, 0,69 grams of NO2. So that was a nice question for the simple reason that they kind of led you through it. They helped you see what you needed to work out and gave you those answers. Okay, they're not going to do that. I'm sorry, but they aren't. They're not going to give that to you in the exams. They would probably just say to you, calculate the mass of the NO2 and you need to look for the limiting reagent. Okay, now let's look at this question. This question includes percentage yield. It says calcium carbonate, which is a solid, decompose on heating, produce calcium oxide, another solid, and oxygen gas. It says to bang, carries out the above reaction using 127 grams of calcium carbonate. He finds that he only gets out 68,2 grams of calcium oxide, what is the percentage yield? Okay, so do you agree that the very first thing we need to do is work out the number of moles of calcium carbonate used? Okay, so number of moles again is mass over molar mass. We have the mass, it's 127 grams, but now we need to get the molar mass of calcium carbonate which equals, well, calcium is 40 plus carbon, which is 12, plus three oxygens are three times 16, which is going to be 52, sorry. Which is going to be 52 plus 48, um, which is 100. Mm -mm, 100. Mm -mm, 100. Okay, so therefore, 
the number of moles is 127 divided by 100, which is 1.27 moles. Okay, the next thing we need to do is make sure it's balanced before we carry on. So calcium, one calcium, one calcium, one carbon. That's interesting. There's no carbon in this thing. Surely it should be calcium carbonate is going to give you calcium oxide plus oxygen plus carbon dioxide. It's not balanced. I don't think it forms oxygen, it actually forms carbon dioxide, it forms carbon dioxide. So this just becomes CO2. Yeah, I'm right. Calcium carbonate breaks up into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, not oxygen. So therefore, the balancing is right because it's one calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon. Um, three oxygens, one, two, three oxygens, yeah. So that's a mistake, it's not oxygen. I apologize, I don't know where, what they were thinking and I didn't see it till now. And this is carbon dioxide. Okay, so anyway, so do you agree that 1,27 moles of calcium carbonate should give us um, 1,27 moles of calcium oxide. Do you agree? Because it's a ratio of 1 to 1. But it only gave us 68.2 grams. So what we need, it only gave us 68.2 grams. So what we need to do is we need to find out how many grams this is. So we should have ended up, should have ended up with 1,27 moles of calcium oxide. Okay, so let's find out how many, um, what the mass of that would be. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. Therefore mass is going to be 1,27 multiplied by 40 plus 16. Okay, so let's get out our calculators and find out what that is. Oops, sorry, 1.27 multiplied by 56, press the button, that's 71,12. So theoretically, we should have got out 71.12 grams, but we actually got out, we actually got out 68,2 grams. So therefore, do you agree the percentage yield is going to be 68,2 divided by 71,12 times 100 over 1 to find out what the percent is. So let's do that. So we're going to go 68.2 divided by 71.12 equals multiplied by 100 equals, equals, and then press the AC button, 95.89, that is a fantastic percentage yield, 95,89%, let me write it over here, 95,89% yield, that is a fantastic yield, really it is, so that is fantastic, okay, right, let's look at the next question. Synthesis gas, also known as syngas, is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So syngas, by the way, is actually very important in the whole fuel industry. Syngas can be produced from methane using the following reaction, okay? So this together, this carbon monoxide and hydrogen is called syngas or synthesis gas. So we take methane in the gaseous form and we basically react it with steam, okay, which is water in the gaseous form. And it'll give us our syngas, or synthesis gas, which is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. 
Nat says, Niels wanted to make a mixture of gas that is three times the volume of the hydrogen gas. Niels wanted to make a mixture of syngas that has three times the volume of hydrogen gas. If the volume of the methane gas used is four decimeters cubed, what volume of carbon monoxide and hydrogen will be produced? Okay, so it says that Niels wanted to make a mixture of syngas. gas. Okay, right. Niels wanted to make a mixture of syn gas that is three times the volume. Okay, if the volume of methane is four moles, um, um, if the volume of gas it says is four decimeters cubed. What volume of carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas will be produced? Okay, now what I'm assuming is that we're talking about volumes of gas at SDP. Okay, that's what I'm thinking about. And we're looking at the fact that a volume of one mole of gas is 22,4 decimeters cubed at SDP. Okay, do you understand that? Um, sorry, my computer is giving me hassles. Just a second, please. Right, so do you see that we've got one mole of methane plus one mole of water gas, water or steam gives us one mole of carbon monoxide and three moles of hydrogen. So if we used a volume of four decimeter cubed, what volume of carbon monoxide is going to be produced? It's going to be the same volume because it's the same mole ratio. So it's going to give us four decimeters cubed of carbon monoxide. And then it's going to give me 12 decimeters, decimeters cubed of hydrogen. One of the fact that 3 times 4 is 12. Okay. Now it says, will this amount of methane produce the correct mixture? They wanted, Niels wanted to mixture of syn gas that is 3 times the volume of the hydrogen gas. Um, they wanted a mixture which has got three times more hydrogen than anything else. So I would say no. Right, now let's go back to empirical formulas. I hope you remember this stuff. Okay, first of all, let's define the term empirical formula. Obviously, you guys need to learn your proper definitions from the textbooks, but basically an empirical formula um, is one in which it's got the minimum um, it, the empirical formula gives you a basic ratio. The ba it's the basic ratio of um, the elements in the compound, of the elements in the compound. Right, now it says the following percentage composition is given of an unknown compound. We've got 7 Seventeen um, zero three percent of sodium. We have got forty seven comma four one percent of sulfur, and we've got thirty five point five six percent of oxygen. And then they say show that the empirical formula of this compound is Na two S two O three. So that's quite nice of them. So let's write this down as Na, which is seventeen comma zero three. Sulfur, which is 47, 41, and oxygen, which is 0.9. Now, remember, those are percentages, but um, we are going to pretend that 
um, we I've got a hundred grams. We've, we're going to pretend that we've got a hundred grams. Um, right. I'm sorry. I don't know. Actually. Okay, so what we're going to do is get the mole ratio. So in order to get the mole ratio, we're going to have to divide by the actual molar mass. So the molar mass of sodium is 23. So we're going to divide that by 23. The molar mass of sulfur is 32. And the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So let's find out what the actual mole ratio looks like. We've got 17 point zero three divided by twenty three. Let's try again. Divided by twenty three equals naught comma seven four. So this equals naught comma seven four. We've got forty seven point four one divided by thirty two equals 1.48 that's 1 comma 48 we've got 35.56 divided by no no delete divided by 16 6 oh sorry 16 equals sd 2.22 that's 2 comma 2 2 now what we do because we want our mole ratio to be 1 to 1 to 1 we're going to divide by the smallest number so we're going to divide this by 0 comma 7 4 we're going to divide this by 0 comma 7 4 and divide this by 0 comma 7 4 so if we do that that's obviously 1 right now let's look at 1.48 1.48 divided by 0.74, which is two. So why are we getting, hmm. And then we're gonna take 222. Two, two. Uh, so it's gonna be 2.22 two, two, and we divide it by 0.74. 0.71 and that gives us 3.13 3 comma that's supposed to be a 4 here sorry so let's just fix that if I go back and I divide that by 4 what do I get 3 perfectly three. So in fact, I don't get Na2S2O3. My empirical formula is NaS2O3, which is very interesting. Let me check that I've done this right. 17.03, 47.41, 35.56. This is definitely 23. Sulfur is definitely 32. Oxygen is 70, 16. I'm right. Okay, so the ratio that I get is Na is 203 okay but it doesn't matter that i have used this one we will use the one they've asked as to prove to solve this problem okay and it says given that the formula mass of the compound is 270 grams per mole determine the true formula of the compound so if we use the what we've worked out i mean what they've given us well, the molar mass of the substance, the, the compound, the formula mass is going to be 2 times 23 plus 2 times 32 plus 3 times 16, which is 46 plus 64 plus 48, which is going to be 46 and 64 make 110 um that's let me just do it on my calculator sorry so it's going to be 46 let's try again 46 plus 64 plus 48 
which is 158. So that is 158. I just want to check something quickly. If I minus 23, yeah, they're wrong. It is supposed to be NaS2. So then when you use that, that becomes 23, and then that becomes 135. And why is that important? Because if you double that up, you times that by two, you end up with 270. So therefore, the formula of the compound, the actual formula is going to be double the empirical formula I found, which is going to be Na2S4O6. And that is the answer for 6.2.2. Right, good. Let's do another question. It says, consider the following reactions. We've got two zinc sulfide plus three oxygen goes to two zinc oxide plus two sulfur dioxide. Okay, let's write that out again. Two zinc sulfide plus three oxygen goes to two zinc oxide plus two sulfur dioxide. Okay, let's balance. Two zincs, two zincs, okay? Two sulfurs, two sulfurs, Six are oxygens, two and four is six. Yay, it's balanced. Now it says, the question reads, what mass of zinc oxide, what mass will be produced from 300 grams of zinc sulfide? So do you agree that the ratio here is two to two? So if we work out the number of moles of zinc sulfide, then we'll know the moles of zinc oxide because it'll be the same. Okay, so we can do that. Number of moles is mass over the molar mass. We've got the mass of the zinc sulfide, it was 300. Now we need to divide by the molar mass of zinc, uh, zinc oxide. No, sorry, zinc sulfide. And zinc is 65, 4 plus sulfide, which is 32. So it's 300 divided by 4, 7, 97, 4. So let's do that. So we're going to go 300, let's clear this. 300 divided by 97.4. Equals three comma zero eight. So that is equal to let's just press the AC button. Let me just erase it. That is equal to three comma zero eight. And that is the number of moles. That is the number of moles. So that we have got, what did we say? That was the number of moles of zinc sulfide was three comma zero eight moles. Okay, right. Now, do you see the ratios two to two? So therefore, we can see that the number of moles of this is also going to be three comma zero eight moles, right? So now we can find the mass because we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. So we are going to say that the mass is 3,08 times by the molar mass of zinc oxide is going to be equal to the mass. Okay, so we've got 3,08 multiplied by the molar mass of the zinc oxide. The zinc, remember, is 65.4 and oxygen is 16. So it is going to be 65,4 plus 16 is going to tell us the mass of the zinc oxide. So we got 3 0.08 multiplied by bracket 65.4 plus 16 close bracket 
equals 250,71. So that is equal to 250,71 grams. So therefore, we can say that we have got 250, oopsie, 250 comma 71 grams of zinc oxide produced from 300 grams of zinc sulfide. Okay, that's interesting. Now, now, we're just going to, oh, don't want to do that. Let's see if we can rather do that. Sure, that was close. Okay, so <laughs> now, um, I'm just going to erase some of this, not all of it. Okay. So next question says, they want us to say how many molecules of sulfur dioxide are produced from 300 grams of zinc sulfide. Okay, so we know that it's 3,08 moles of zinc sulfide. And the ratio, which is quite nice, is 2 to 2, right? So do you agree that therefore we've got 3,08 moles of sulfur dioxide form, but that's not what they asked. They asked for molecules. But we know that Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times by 10 to the 23, is the number of elementary particles per mole. In other words, if we produced one mole of sulfur dioxide, we would have got 6.02 times by 10 to the 23 molecules of sulfur dioxide. But if we didn't produce one mole, we produced 3,08. So we're going to multiply this by Avogadro's constant, which is 6,02 times by 10 to the 23. And it's going to give us the number of molecules of sulfur dioxide formed. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got 3.08 multiplied by 6.02 exponent 23 equals, equals, equals 1.85 times 10 to the 24. So that's going to be 1.85 times 10 so 24 molecules, 1,85 times by 10 to the 24 molecules of sulfur dioxide. Finally, it says, what volume of oxygen, okay, at STP is required to react completely with the 300 grams? Okay, so now we need to think a little bit more. Okay, we need to think a little bit more. We know that the mole ratio of zinc sulfide to oxygen is 2 to 3, right? The mole ratio is 2 moles of zinc sulfide and needs 3 moles of oxygen. Okay, so do you agree that 1 mole of zinc sulfide is going to re require 3 over 2 moles of oxygen, right? But now we don't have 1, we have 3,08 moles. So in other words, to get this to 3,08, we're going to multiply the 1 by 3,08. But what you do to the one side of the ratio, you have to do to the other side of the ratio. So we're going to take this and go 3 over 2 multiplied by 3,08. And that's going to give us the number of moles of oxygen required, okay? Why do we want that? Because it's a relationship between the moles of oxygen at SCP and this volume. So we're going to take 3. Point, no, let's clear this. We're going to go 3.08 multiplied by 3 divided by 2 divided by 2 equals 4.62 moles. So this is 4,62 moles of oxygen, but that's not what they asked for. They asked for the volume, but we know that one mole occupies 22,4 decimeters cubed. So do you agree we can go 4,62 multiplied by 22,4, which is going to equal what? Okay, let's go. Let's find that out. So it is 4.62 multiplied by 22.4 equals 103,4 
eight or four nine. So it's a hundred and three comma four nine decimeters cubed. There we go. Ta-da! Right, okay, thank you, grade 11s. I will see you again for science on Tuesday. Have a great day.